Now that you've finished the introductory course, it's time to move on to look at the electronic die. We're going to go back to 123D circuits, and if you search for Mr. Rokerson again, you'll see that there's a breadboard circuit called electronic die. If you open it up, this is what you'll see. I've created a breadboard version of the electronic die printed circuit board, and you can see there are seven LEDs, and this will allow us to display any of the scores on a standard die. You'll also see that there's a push button for rolling the die and a piezo for making sound. But what I really want to do is look at the circuit behind this breadboard. And up here, if you click on the middle view, which is the schematics view, it will bring up a circuit diagram of our electronic die circuit. You can see here are all of the connections to the Arduino. And over here, are the LEDs and some resistors. There's a switch here, that's the push button for rolling the die, another resistor and the piezo. We're gonna look at each of these elements in turn and we're gonna start off by looking at the LEDs. That's these seven symbols here. You'll notice that the LEDs at the bottom end of each of them, what we call the cathode end, that's the end with the bar across it here in the symbol. They are all actually connected together. If I leave my mouse highlighting that connection for you, you'll see that it connects to the bottom of every single one of these diodes. They all connect to the same connection. And if we trace it back to the Arduino, we can see that that is a ground connection. So the bottom of all of my diodes is connected to ground. And then each diode has a protective resistor associated with it. Note that the numbers match up. So R1 protects D1, R5 protects D5, and so on. This protective resistor is there to limit the amount of current flowing through the diode and stop it from blowing up. If you connect a diode directly across a power supply, that is higher than its threshold voltage, it will explode. What you'll notice, however, is that if we look at the connections from the outputs of the Arduino, there are only four output connections, and yet we're controlling seven LEDs. So several LEDs are going to be controlled by the same output pin. If we look at this first one here, you can see that output D11 controls R5 and therefore D5, LED5, and also R3 and therefore LED3. What that means is that this LED and this LED will always come on at the same time. If we think about the different patterns that we want to be able to display on our electronic die, we can see why this is the case. We will only ever want to bring these two corners on together. And that's going to be when we're displaying the number two, when it's just those two on, the number five, when it's those two, these two, and the middle one, the number four, when it's these two and these two, and the number six, when it's these two, these two, and these two. In actual fact, D3 and D5 are controlled together. And so if we look at the output from D9 of our Arduino, so are D1 and D7, because those two will always come on together in those patterns. In exactly the same way, if we trace output D10, we can see that R6 and R2 always come on together. That's these middle ones. And finally, if we look at D12, we can see that the central LED is controlled separately. So if we think about each of the numbers that we're going to want to display, we can try and figure out which LEDs we're going to need to switch on.